Hey everybody, welcome back. In this video, we are going to be making this pretty epic website theme changer. So you click it, and it changed this theme of the website. And it'll persist through refreshes as well. So light theme remembers, dark theme remembers that. All right, let's get started. All right, so here we are with some pretty basic HTML to start out with, link to our CSS, link to our JavaScript, and a button here. Probably don't need it wrapped in the main tags there. And a button there. So then it looks just like this, just a simple button. And so let's get to the styling because that's what this is mostly going to be. First, just um, font. Uh, font family. Uh, let's use Roboto. I don't know how to pronounce that actually. Roboto, 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 Roboto. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, that should be good. And then body that. And our button has an ID of change theme button. So style it like this and we'll say font inherit um, border, no border, no outline. Okay, what do we have? Okay, that looks good. And we'll say uh, back ground color of um, dark gray and then of course color white like that okay now we want to get this in the very middle of the screen like right here so I'm going to change the display of the body to flex because flex is fun and then justify content space around I believe and align items uh, center. I think that's correct. And then, of course, we have to set the body's height to 100%. And there it's in the center. Okay, now a little bit more styling for the button. So I'm going to say uh, cursor pointer um, on hover. Text decoration, we'll give it an underline. Okay, add some padding now. So, um, that looks good. And uh, some for the right and left too, so 0.25M. Okay, that looks good. And um, now we're going to make the theming work. So what we're going to do is, with a little touch of JavaScript, we're going to, every time the button is clicked, add a class to the body of dark theme. If that class isn't there, we'll give the, we'll style it with light theme, and if it is there, we'll style it with a dark theme. So, document, uh, get element by ID, Oh, what was it called? Change theme button. Yeah. Add event listener. Click. That is a really long first line of code. Oh well. <laughs> um, and then every time it's clicked, uh, the body, we're going to toggle a class and that class is dark theme. Okay, so uh, if I open up the developer tools, and inspect the body, now every time we click this, that class is being added and then removed. Okay, um, I 
think we're done with those. So now we have to make the CSS respond to that. And to do this, I'm going to define a couple colors. I'm going to say dark, dark color is 333, and light color is white. Well, be consistent, you know. Okay, so the body is going to have a background color of light, if it's just the body without the dark theme class and a color of dark. But then if it is a dark theme, so and dark theme, then pop these in here and they'll get switched around. So that'll be dark, dark, and that'll be light. Okay, so that works, and since, well, we're just going to have the button be inverse colors, so this is going to have a background color of dark and a color of light. It should, it looks just the same. And so that's switching, and dark, dark theme. Uh, we're going to switch these colors to these colors. I think. Oh, no. That's wrong one. Uh, these ones. Okay. So that's working, but, you know, add some transitions because otherwise it's, I don't know, kind of boring. So we'll say transition all 0 0.15 seconds uh, ease out and I'll use the same transition here and now it transitions wonderfully um, but all of this is just a fade transition which you know it's okay but uh, we can do better so what I'm going to do is remove this background color from here actually just the background color and just the background color and let's see before we're going to use some pseudo elements the before and after to make it like a flip back and forth between the two colors and you'll see it like move so content because that's a requirement. It's going to have, let's see, this um, position absolute. So that means that this has to be a position relative because then we're going to say top zero, left zero, width 100%, height 100%, and back background color of dark. So what this is going to, nope, that's in, that's in front of it. Sorry, it's the index stacking context, all kinds of fun, yeah, right? Oh, ah, okay, so this is the default button color because now I have to set the background color of this to transparent so we can see the before pseudo element behind it. And now it looks just the same. It looks like it has that background color. But this is actually the gray here, is, or dark gray, is actually the pseudo element that this, it's all of, all of this is that dark gray. So that means that we can manipulate this uh, when it's dark theme. So dark theme the color is going to be dark, and we'll move this before pseudo element out of the way. So before top, or no, left negative 100%. Okay, so now you can't see anything, but uh, you can see it jump out of the way there, so I have to add the transition again.
Now you see it slide out of the way. Uh, of course, now we can't see anything really except for dark gray. So we're going to have to add a second pseudo element, and that'll be after. So I'm going to give it all the same styles and then just change the couple that need to be changed after. This is going to have a background color of the light shade, which happens to be white. And it's in the same position right now, so we have to move it out of the way 100%. So it's all the way to the right. It's right there. Um, we have to move that now here. So um, after left zero. Okay, so now that's sliding into place. Um, yeah, but we can see it outside of the edges of the the theme button. So up here, I'm going to say overflow hidden because that way now it just slides back and forth and it's wonderfully pretty. Okay, so we got that down, but if I change this to the dark theme and refresh, it changes back to the light theme. So we have to make it persist across web page refreshes, which means we have to do some stuff in the JavaScript. So every time we toggle the theme, um, this is going to return a value, either true or false, whether or not the dark theme class is now set. So I'll say let dark theme enabled equals that. So that'll be either true or false. And then in the local storage, Uh, set item dark theme enabled to dark theme enabled. Um, but this is just going to be setting it. It's not going to be getting it. So each time we refresh the page, it still won't add anything. So we'll have to check on the page load if the local storage item is set. Dark, dark theme enabled. And if it isn't set at all, it'll just return null, which is a falsy value. So that'll work. And so if the dark theme is enabled, then add the dark theme class. All right. Now let's see if that works. Okay, light theme. Wait, right. it's supposed to be the light theme, and it goes back to the dark theme. But if it is the dark theme, it works. Um, the reason for that is, well, if we look at our local storage, whoops, we have dark theme enabled, false, right? But that's a string because the local storage is going to convert it to a string. So we have to, we could check if that equals false, or we could use json.parse, which is what I'm going to do. And that should correctly parse it. So if we refresh, it's the light theme. Now it's the dark theme. Refresh, still the dark theme. Now it's the light theme. Refresh, still the light theme. Perfect. All right, everybody. There you go. That is how you make a website theme changing button in a little bit of JavaScript and some SAS. Hope you enjoyed the tutorial. Hope you learned something from it. My name is Jacob, and have a good one.